Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. So this video today is on a 2003 Mercedes C-Class. Uh, this particular module is the C180 compressor. So 1.8 petrol engine, as far as I'm aware, uh, I believe. Um, and this car came to me uh, with the yellow light. So there is a fault in there as well for uh, brake pads, uh, wear sensor, uh, sensor, brake pad wear. Sorry, um, uh, I don't think I'm supposed to be looking at that. Um, I've just tried to ring the guy that dropped the car, but he's not answering the phone. So that is possible. Just the uh, brake pads are low. Uh, if we need to do a video on that, I will. Uh, but for now, I'm sure that's why the car came here is because of that uh, light So Maxis is connected. I haven't scanned the car yet whatsoever So we're gonna do it now Try to move this to a place with maybe a little bit less glare. That's good Let's see if it detects the car Nope, whatsoever. It's gonna cancel this. No, we didn't because the Max is not connected to it. The VCI is not connected. Okay, and we are back on business. So let's gonna do that. It's gonna try that again. A lot of glare, isn't it? Okay, so we still failed to read the VIN. We had to load the actually Mercedes programming program and then he found the VIN and decode the car just fine. So we're gonna go diagnosis. We're gonna go straight to control unit. Okay, so read the codes. The engine is running and it's, it's running quite smooth. I can't really see. Okay. Misfire. Misfires, damage through a catalyst converter. This is not very good. There's some store codes here for fuel efficiency, catalyst converter, misfire of cylinder one, two, three, all cylinders, fuel efficiency, self adaptation of mixture, oxygen sensors. Wow. Okay, there's a lot of codes here. Airflow meter. Okay, so there is a lot of codes. Um, when you start like this, it's a little bit complicated. So I think what I'm going to do to start with is we're going to erase these codes. Okay. The light went off straight away. He's asking me to, to cycle the ignition, which we are going to do. And wait 10 seconds. And then we'll be back. The, turn the ignition back on. And I'm going to actually start the engine. And the engine started just fine. It's going to say, yes, we did that. The light just came back on. And now I want to see exactly what's in there. If we have the same amount of codes. No. So. That's our code now. So that's the only code that came back. As you can see the engine light is back on. Uh, 
and uh, that's the code we're gonna tackle so as you could see I'm not gonna say that we don't still have a problem next uh, that the airflow meter but who knows if the airflow meter was causing all the other issues uh, by not measuring the air correctly or by not measuring the air at all which will be there in a second uh, obviously can't adapt the, mi the, the, the mixture air fuel which was a code there for that and then it, may, it can cause misfires it can cause problems with the catalytic converter obviously so yeah so it might be that uh, this code just triggered all the other codes on the long run so that's why sometimes it is important for you guys not to just look at a list of codes like that and just panic because you know there's no point really um, so I didn't store the codes but the the max ECs stores straight away all the codes so in background max ECs stores every single scan you do um, so that's why I've just went back delete so if I want to go back and see which codes were here I can do that quite easily so anyway but that that's off topic so this is the code that came back so this is what we're gonna look at now the first thing I want to see really is exactly what information the ECU is actually seeing coming from this airflow meter okay so we don't have nothing here for that and look at that is the only live data I have thank you very much Maxi says so that's it I have engine cooling temperature which is fine it's not that hot yet because I only started the engine before I start to record this video battery voltage oil temperature fuel level yes the, the light is on so that's fine uh, oil level yeah that's whatever engine is not running okay oil quality 2.4 okay so so what we're gonna have to do we have two options here one option is just let me see if there's any it's not gonna be nothing else now nah, that's that's nothing else I want to see the the live data coming from that uh, sensor if possible otherwise we might gonna have to get the scope on it but but I think I'm gonna have to get star machine to do this um, as I was just saying I could just jump into the sensor and have a quick visual look which actually I might do that first I think it's it's worth to do that so let's go up, open the bonnet have a look at the hair flow meter see if there's anything visible in there that we can see okay so I did a quick uh, inspection uh, we uh, can't see nothing wrong with it really uh, everything looks absolutely fine um, I mean it was plugged in correctly uh, there's no corrosion or nothing everything looks tight and clean but there is one thing there is one thing and I had very very I've learned in the past without mistake the airflow meter on this car is not a genuine uh, airflow meter um, the airflow meter is an aftermarket one and I don't like airflow meters from aftermarket uh, companies um, I had very bad experiences in the past where the, the, the ECU just doesn't like them for some reason so I think um, I think the first thing but nevertheless um, it might not be the case so the first thing I think I'm gonna do really is plug it in the star just like I said and see exactly what star tells me see if I can get uh, hold of any readings coming from that uh, airflow meter okay so I've been already uh, looking at a few things but what we're going to do is look at that value as I said try to read the value that the airflow meter is reading um, is sending back to the ECU so uh, the way you do it here on uh, DAS is you go to the fault code so this is our fault code the same as the on the maxi sys uh, it would be interesting to try the maxi sys see if it works the same way i have my doubts but uh, we, i'll might try and we'll get back to you uh, so we will uh, click twice on this so we double click on the fault it comes with two things that you can look at so a description of the fault which brings you to here 
to a document, okay? Or we can actually check the component. Now we can check the power supply if we do this, which will tell you what to check, okay? Or we can go here and check the actual value and that's why it brings so it tells me that the pre uh, the prerequisites uh, temperature coolant uh, over 70 which it is is an idle AC off which it is and the specified values for the airflow meter should be somewhere between 5 and 13 uh, kilograms per hour if engine speed rises the air mass increases is the value okay look at that no it's not now to see if the actually airflow meter is reading anything I'm gonna press the pedal and we'll see if that value changes and look at that it actually changes but when it comes down to idling it goes to zero so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna accelerate very gentle until I start to get a reading okay so there we go so I have a reading let me okay so so this is roughly what you should be getting now and I'm nearly at 1500 rpms let's say 1250 to get the reading that should be while idling there we go there he is so I would say the connections are good I think it's pointless to be checking the connections to the airflow meter because otherwise that will read nothing okay so it's reading Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that we have a, a bad airflow meter, to be fair. Um, but I'm going to inspect the system around, see if there's any leaks, any, any, I don't know, any cracked pipes that could somehow influence these readings here. Um, and we'll go from there. Actually, here, sorry about that. Before that, let's going to see what that says if I press no. So the possible cause, this actually tells you, okay, now that uh, the actual values are now okay. The possible cause or remedies, uh, check power supply of the component, uh, auto airflow meter, uh, auto film, mass airflow. I could check the voltage. I believe the voltage is going to be there. Otherwise, we'll get no readings whatsoever. Uh, check lines from component to the control unit. That's why I said we, we would be uh, doing. And um, this now is what I said I would be checking unmetered it here so that's what I want to be doing uh, when he says unmetered hair is any air that is getting into the system after the airflow meter that can cause the engine to run fine to run just fine but because there's air getting afterwards yeah that air doesn't need to be pulled before the airflow meter which means it's not going to be red so that can be another cause and I'm gonna start by that one in there okay because just as I said and repeat himself if we had no readings whatsoever I'll check the power supply I'll check the lines sorry this is touch I'll check the lines just like just like it says here and I said earlier previously uh, from the ECU to the to the sensor uh, but we are getting some readings so I do strongly believe the, the, the lines are okay, so wiring is okay, power supply is going to be okay, so my problem is going to be the last two in my opinion. So that's why we're going to check, I just said this is touch. So that's what we're going to check next and um, and see if we find anything. Okay, so when I start to inspect the engine. I don't know if you can hear this sort of vacuum leak coming from somewhere around here and I want to see I want you to see what happens when I spray some of this and 
this is just normal electrical cleaner okay so here you can hear me probably a little bit a little bit better so when I went in there and checked the engine, um, as I was saying, I heard that sort of vacuum leak, or it, well, it looks like a vacuum leak. Um, and then when I spray that uh, electrical cleaner, as you can see, the engine nearly dies. So we're going to have to inspect that and try to figure out what is wrong in there. Okay, so we just removed the filter housing where the ECU is and... Uh, the intake pipe here and as soon as I remove this out and look at that area it's getting dark so but look at that oh you can still see a little bit like that so look at that it's completely gone here okay and another thing is I don't know how good you're gonna see this one but can you see right in there right at the bottom at the end of the screwdriver the pipe is completely split in there as well so this rubber pipe is absolutely gone so there's two vacuum leaks here that is allowing so that one right there and this one that is allowing hair into the intake after the flow meter so this is not helping i'm actually surprised the car is running so smooth um, with these leaks so there's no point for me to try to repair this we're just gonna take it out and get replaced up here is going to be easy down there it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass but we'll find a way okay so unfortunately um, I had to finish this on the dark it's pretty much seven o'clock now as you can see it's really dark but uh, basically we replaced the the hose Let me just drop this light so we just replaced the hose uh, It's a little bit awkward to put it on the engine side right at the bottom because you don't really have space To work around there, but we managed to get it then and then just, just two jubilee clips really one at the bottom one at the top I didn't bought the proper hose um, You know you don't really need it. Uh, I just got a, a, a hose that is the same diameter uh, rubber hose uh, from the local auto parts uh, store uh, just put it in there get it connected Put it all back together, and uh, I'm gonna now start the engine. I haven't started the engine yet afterwards So we're gonna start the engine now and see what happens Okay, so the engine is running seems to be running just fine and we're gonna go I've shut the chantry off so we're gonna have to go all over again but I will fill all in and then we'll come back okay and we are nearly ready to read the codes again it's gonna read these codes and this is a quite good sign straight away because the two top um, faults, so the fault with the hot mass airflow is now stored and uh, well I had the engine disconnected so what I want to do now is I want to go here and see if we have any live data for the sensor now and look at that look at that see so basically, that's what we just said earlier, that a vacuum leak was allowing hair into the engine, enough for the engine to run without the hair flow meter to measure anything. As you can see, we have a good reading now, which is absolutely spot on. That's what we needed. So we're going to go back, and I'm going to delete these codes. I, uh, the self-adaptation, reach it, stop, tendons, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're gonna delete this and see what happens, but uh, Hopefully the car now is gonna learn all the mixtures again. I could just uh, possibly uh, Reset all the adaptations and all that stuff Which uh, actually ooh, let me see if there's anything here learning processes 
learning throttle, learning recyclated, resetting sensor adaptation. What's this one for? Let me see what this one is for. Rotor adaptation. The sensor rotor. Nah, I think this is for the... I think this is for the... For the compressor. Uh, nevertheless, we're gonna we're gonna leave it. It should it should now obviously relearn all the values, and should be okay. So what I'm gonna do now? So the engine light is off now. We're gonna turn the engine off. Turn it back on. If you remember last time, the fault came back on as soon as I start the engine, or just a little bit after. I think it's going to take probably some a few drive cycles until you start to learn everything again but let's just going to check the faults again so that's just a self, uh, self adaptation of mixture is stored anyway so I think that was that little bit of the start possibly so all we need to do now is uh, go for a drive or drive the car and uh, he should this fault should uh, should go away I believe because obviously let me restart the engine again so is this a bit of a sort of a surging that it does here But the engine light is not coming back on now, which is, which means we have sorted this problem. Go to the fault codes again. It's going to come up again with that. Uh, oh no, cold, no fault codes. So I, I think it's all it's going to take now is a, is a drive cycle or a few drive cycles until he starts to relearn everything. Obviously, because he now has the proper measurements from the airflow meter and all that stuff. So he's going to start to adapt the mixture again. And uh, that's it, really. I think the problem is sorted. Uh, I do apologize once again uh, for finishing this video on the dark, but and not to show you uh, the final uh, job. But basically, like I said, we just replaced the hose. Um, so yeah, so that fault saying was a short circuit and check this it was nothing to do with that. Uh, that was why it was that uh, vacuum leak. And that's it. Problem solved. Um, what to say hope you enjoyed the video hope there's information here that can help you out um, if you have any questions any comments please put them below and like always thank you for watching